our heart, O Lord, we pray in the mighty name of Jesus. And in the name of Jesus, Lord, we pray that we will submit. We pray that we will surrender. In the name of Jesus, we pray that we will yield to your word in the name of Jesus. Rabastaka and Darabaki and Anne, Rabba, Kiane on Do, Rabastaka and Nebara Baba, Kiane on Doberado and Nebara Baba, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Over Rabastaka on Do, Kiane Berado. Brethren, I want us to continue in prayer this morning that we will seek to please God. Hallelujah. We will seek to do what? Please God and not man. Please God and not man. We are praying that we will seek to please God and not man. Shall we pray? In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Praise be to our God. Shall we be up and stand and please? That our God is faithful, he's good, he's kind, and he's ever more sure to his word. This morning, in the minute or two, I want you to open up your mouth and begin to bless the name of the Lord. Begin to invite him into your heart, into this place. Let him take absolute control over the service today. We ask him that his omnipresence and his omniscience and his power and his might shall dwell with us tonight, this morning. That wherever we, we receive from him, we shall not take and we shall not take for granted in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we glorify your name. We celebrate you because you are our God, our Father, and our King. We thank you that you are the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the end. There is no us without you, O oh Lord. For it is by your grace and by your mercy that we are standing here this morning. We take it not for granted to count this day as a privilege given unto us. We ask that your holy name name be exalted. Your holy name be adored. Your holy name be lifted. Father, we pray that you will take power. You will take Father Lord preeminence over this atmosphere this morning. We cast down our burdens. We cast down our fears. We cast down everything, oh Lord my God, that will hinder our praise, that will hinder our worship from coming to you. We subdue it under the authority name of Jesus. We are asking the mighty one, oh Lord, descend in the power of your might uh, and let your people receive you and uh, experience you like never before this morning. Uh, ancient of days, we bless your name. 
Ah la 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 ba se ke sheli ya korororo bo satari anda da da ba ya ra koyondo do 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 bo se ke re anda da 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 ba ya ra pa yanda de 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 bo saki anda da 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 ba ya Allah ko ya satari ya ka ya da 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 ba ayanda ba eko re anda da da ba she ko re apa ya aya ke re anda da 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 ba si ko yo po se ke re anda da da ba ya re ka ya anda da 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 ba le ko se ti anda da 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 ba ya ra koyo soto ki anda da 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 ba ya ayata ikaya sata ya kaya anda ba ya abayo sata re kaya anda da 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 ba ya re kaya anda ba ikaya anda da 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 ba ya kere anda ya for you are worthy for you are mighty for you are holy for you are great our Lord our God we honor your name we extol your name sweet Jesus we celebrate you this morning there is no one else like you Alpha and Omega there is no one else like you beginning and the end there is no one else like you faithful father you alone be hallowed this morning you alone be adored this morning ale eke ya kosoti akayanda daraba ye kosata daraba ya ala payo sate ra koyo sata daraba ya from the depths of our hearts we say praise be your name from the depths of our hearts we say hello it be your name for it is all about you and you alone, oh God. Oh, we worship you, Lord. We worship you, Adonai. We worship you, great King. We bless your name, Father, oh Lord. For you are a faithful father to us. It is by your grace and by your mercy that we have gathered here this morning. Not by our doing. And so we are careful enough to bring the praise and the glory to you alone, Father. We well, thank you, Jesus. We love you. You've been faithful, Lord. From the ages past. That is why your name is forevermore. You've been faithful, Lord, from the ages past. Oh, that.
mercy never failed me. All my days, I've been held in your hands. From the moment that I wake up, until I lay in my head.
your final say. If you have not been backed up against a wall before, then when somebody says it is him that has my final say, you may not understand it. But if you have had your back back up against a wall and there is no other place to turn and you know that no one else can deliver you from where you are, but the God who has your final say, the one who has declared it, because he has declared it, yes. he is a faithful God to that which he has declared and so no matter what and whatever it takes for him to fulfill it, he does it. Yes. That is the God we serve. The God that has our final say people of God, it is easy to praise God 
when he is doing according to your desires. Because you say, God bless me and he blesses you. But there are times when he says, just stand and see my salvation. Can you still praise him? Can you still worship him? Because that is a difficult moment. Hallelujah. When you don't see what God is doing, but you still have to worship him for who he is. Bible says that he is the ruler of gods. He judges gods. And Bible continues to declare that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of darkness in high and wicked places. But this is the same people or the same deity that our God judges. Hallelujah. And what am I saying? So you know that what he judges are not little puny things that you just go and kick around. It takes somebody with authority. It takes the one who is supreme over all. It takes the one who is God indeed. Is he your God? Is he the one you have come to worship this morning? Then somebody lift up your voice and declare that our God is great. And he is greatly to be praised. Our God is mighty and he is worthy of our worship. The one who is seated in the heavens and he rules above all. Is he see the God you have come to worship? Then can you put everything aside and just focus your eyes on him and declare who he is this morning? Hey, My Lord and my God, we have come to declare your greatness. We have come to declare your power and your might. We have come to declare your beauty and your majesty because you are God all by yourself. It doesn't matter where we find ourselves. It does not change who you are because you are God, because you are good, because you are merciful. Somebody worship him. Somebody magnify the Lord. about you. We declare that you are great. Great is Jehovah. Great is Jehovah. Great is Jehovah. Great is Jehovah. Great
What she said, he said, it is, it's so normal when things are looking good and you are praising God. But where it looks like everything looks murky, that things are not balancing, that you still found a voice to worship. Amen. No wonder the Bible said, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. <laughs> a strong tower and the righteous run into it. See. Do I have some righteous people in the house this morning? Ah, ah, the name of the Lord. Bishop, I saw, anytime I see Bishop in the house, my spirit is excited. This man of God, <laughs> the least said about him, the better. I was in some corner and his name was mentioned. Then I began to see that, oh, I don't really know this bishop. Bishop Abbey, you are most welcome. You are a blessing to the kingdom of God and to Holy Grounds Assembly International. And First Lady, as for you, ours is a different story. <laughs> it's great to see you in the house. And my two amigos. <laughs> Actually, I'm not supposed to be doing this. I'm supposed to be doing declaration. But <laughs> the worship was so good. <laughs> Hallelujah. Are you ready to declare? So when we declare, we are just reinforcing what God had, God had already said. We are reinforcing. Amen. There's somebody, I don't want this to be a recital. You are declaring and agreeing with God. Amen. In the name of Jesus. If you please humbly raise your right hand to the heavens with me as a sign of surrender. Amen. And just repeat prayerfully after me. My Father, I thank you for the daily provisions in the name of Jesus. You said you will supply all my needs according to your riches in glory in Christ Jesus. Today, I thank you for the fulfillment of this word in the name of Jesus. I magnify you for the blessings. I thank you for the countable and the uncountable blessings you have bestowed on my life in the name of Jesus. This morning, I declare that I am special and extraordinary. I am not average. I refuse to be average in the name of Jesus. I have been custom made by the creator himself. I am one of a kind. I am one of a kind. In the name of Jesus. Of all the things God created, what he is most proud of is of is me. In the name of Jesus. I am his masterpiece. I am his most prized possession. In the name of Jesus. I will keep my head 
held high, knowing that I am a child of the Most High God, made in His very image, in the name of Jesus. Today, I declare that God is bringing about new seasons of growth in my life, in my church, in my family, in my businesses, in the name of Jesus. I will not get stagnant and hold on to the old. The old is gone. I am looking forward. I am focused into what God is doing in the future concerning my life. I will be open to change knowing that God has something better in front of me. New doors of opportunity, new relationships, new levels of favor are in my future. I believe it. I believe it as I have declared it. Because this year, this year is my year of victory, of victory. I believe it, I confess it, and I will see it happen in my life. In the name of Jesus, if you believe it, put your hands together and give God praise, somebody. Hallelujah. Come on, do it better unto Jesus. Do it better unto God this morning. Hallelujah. Amen. Are you excited to be in the house of the Lord? Come on, I cannot hear you. I said, are you excited to be in the house of the Lord? If you are, give God a big shout. Come on, you can do it better than that. Give God a big shout. Hallelujah. Amen. There's a word that God dropped in my spirit and I, I would like to share with you. The Bible says that Acts 7 verse 30 it says that, and when 40 years were expired, it says, there appeared to him in the wilderness of Mount Sinai an angel of the Lord in a flame of fire in a bush. And I begin to ask the Holy Spirit that what does that mean? And the Holy Spirit said that there are certain, there is a place I'm taking you. There is something I want to do in your life. It says, but there are certain things that needs to be expired in your life. Hallelujah. He said, there are some things that you have to let go. And I'm about to cause those things to be released out of your life so that I can come in and do certain things for you. That I can take you to your next level. Hallelujah. I I want you to shout expired. There are certain things that needs to get rid of. Hallelujah. Even there are some friends that you have and you know that they need to be expired in your life. Hallelujah. There is some attitudes and some behavior that we have, but that needs to be what? Expired in our life because God is taking us somewhere. And if you believe it, give God a big shout this morning. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. You may be seated, please. Amen. I want to take this opportunity and welcome each and every one of us to Holy Grounds Assembly, a church of holiness, grace, and what? Action. Hallelujah. So I want to take this time and welcome each and every one of you. You are at the right place. Hallelujah. And God will show up and show off in your life this morning. Hallelujah. Amen. Do we have any testimonies in the house? You have to testify or I will just call on you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please put your hands together as we welcome our dear sister. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise Jehovah. I thank God. I am so grateful and privileged to be alive today. I want to honor God for he is the source of my life. And I want to honor my papa who is in Ghana. God bless you, Father, for all that you have taught us and all that you are doing and all the prayers. I honor the man of God in this house. God bless you, Pastor Kojo. God bless you, Dr. Quincy. And I want to honor the man of God, Pastor Abe, and the woman of God. God bless you all. All my life you have been faithful. 
All my life you have been so, so good. Every breath that I had made, I will sing of the goodness of God. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Oh, your goodness is running after, it's running after me. And I am, I'm not saying this to be proud, but God is good. I have a testimony and uh, multiple testimonies. Um, this week, I had something um, done to my tooth. And I was in a lot of pain, but, you know, it was going down, down, down. But on Friday, I started feeling this sensation. This pain was overwhelming. And I've, I've had this pain before. It was when I had, um, when I had that pain, I have to get a tooth canal down uh, in my mouth. So this time, my whole face, my eyes, nose, even by touch, it hurts. So when I was in bed, I went to bed that night, and I remember, people of God, please, if you are not joining the Bible studies on Wednesday, do whatever you are doing, stop and come. You know, sometimes you hear the word of God multiple times, but there are times when you hear it, God opens your eyes, opens you, uh, you know, your inner spirit to have an understanding. Wednesday, when we had a Bible study, there's only one word that stood up to me. And throughout the whole week, I have used that word. And it said, God, I don't know where we took the scripture from. I know it's from John, but it said, God is a, comf uh, the Holy Spirit is a comforter. It's a counselor. It's an advocate. And it's a standby. When it says standby, that word, it was in my spirit. The whole week, it was in my spirit. So when I was in bed and I was feeling that pain, I said, Lord, Holy Spirit, you are a standby. So I know that you are standby. Give, and I put my hand on my face and I said, this is your hand. Rub this face. I don't want to have a tooth canal. Take this pain away. Give me rest. Let me have peace and sleep. And that was it. No pain till I'm standing here now, right now. <laughs> and that's not the only thing. Last night, I worked all day. I was very tired. So when I finished work, just went to the fridge, got some food, sat down and started eating. Finished eating, and I just took a piece of fish and put it in my mouth, eating, swallow, and there was this bone that just crossed my neck, like it's like that. You can feel it. So I got up, started coughing, coughing just to let it out. It wasn't coming out. I was continuously coughing, 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 thinking it's going to come out. But all I felt, it, it just went down my throat, and that was it. It, it, it feels like somebody just pat my back and then the bone went down. And after that, I was so shaking. I have headache. I was having all kinds of things. When I went to bed, I was still having that shaking and feeling. I said, God, you are the Holy Spirit. You are a standby. You are the one that gives rest, peace. You are the one that gives sleep. The Bible says I will lie down and sleep in peace. Oh, Lord, you are my safety. When I said this word and I went, I didn't even know when I fell asleep. I slept more than I have ever slept in a whole week. So I am just standing here to say, Lord, thank you. And I am encouraging somebody, please join the Bible study. Pastor Kojo, God bless you for your dedication. And let a word stood up to you. You don't have to know the whole Bible. But if you can think of one word that God says to you, keep that word and hold on to it. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. You can do it better. Give God praise. Give God all the glory this morning. What a powerful testimony. Amen. Amen. Do we have any more testimonies in the house? Please help me welcome our dear brother, Brother David. Come on. Hallelujah. Thank you. Um, I just want to give a, a testimony to the glory of God and also to encourage uh, somebody. You know, when the Bible says that 
our God is our ever-present help. It is always, it is not sometimes, always true. You know, sometimes we pray and ask for God's help. We might not see it immediately, but there are times where God responds almost immediately. Uh, last year, um, it was my plan to get my school done because the school has taken longer than I planned. And I have some plans for this year, so I was like, I need to get this school done so that I can move on and do other things. Now, however, it got a point where I was supposed to start my clinicals. The course I was doing, you have to do 500 hours of clinicals to finish. And um, the school has a, I can I outsource our clinical uh, document that we need to give to uh, get certified to do the clinicals. Now, I give them everything, and the only thing that uh, was left was my COVID uh, card. Now, what happened was that accidental, I lost my, after I took my first um, injection, somehow I misplaced the card. So when I went in and took the second shot and the booster, it was on a different card. So I submit all this to them, I submitted it, and they said they needed the original initial one. And I was like, well, I misplaced it. I couldn't have taken the second and the third shot if I have not taken the second. But here, sometimes common sense doesn't rule. So they, they disagreed. And then it went on and on. The class was about to start. I went in because I took the vaccine, um, the injection at work. I provide everything. Even it shows the day that I took them. They said they want the lot number of the vaccine, which I couldn't get because I, don't have, I didn't have the card. So on the last day, the clinical coordinator said I have to drop off the course because they couldn't let me start without it. I was distraught because it means I have to wait and reorganize and take me longer. And she went on and on that, well, I didn't have to rush because, well, I could finish in March, I could finish, and I was like, you don't know my plan, so you couldn't. So I couldn't argue too much because sometimes when you argue too much with uh, your professors, it becomes an issue. So I let it go. But in my spirit, I was heading, I, was, I, was, I wasn't happy. So there was this day that I was coming to prayer meeting. It was two weeks after the classes have started. And then so I went in, then after that I went into my counselor and we talked about the, any other the alternative. And she told me that the other alternative, because there was an alternative where you can double the clinical courses, two courses, and it's seven weeks. It's terrible because you have to do 250 hours in seven weeks. That literally means going to clinicals Monday to Friday, and I was working. So she told me that, you know what, they've stopped that program because only 5% of students who pursue that are successful. So they don't encourage it. But I was like, well, I have been 1% before, so the 5% is not a problem. But then they said, well, they will not let it, uh, they will not agree to it. So I let it go. But this day that I was coming to prayer meeting, I think it was a Tuesday, my wife was working late, so I was the only one that was coming. So I was coming. I wasn't even praying. I was just talking to God. I was like, God, I know what I'm saying is crazy to men. It's impossible. Because school has started. We've closed that chapter. But somehow my spirit, I was still not settled. So I said, God, I know all things are possible to you. If it is your will, my uh, covenant with you or my uh, request for you at the beginning of the year was to finish school this year. I know you can still do it. Though to men, it is impossible. So let your will be done. So I came to church, and we were praying, and God bless pastor. So pastor gave a word, which agreed with my thoughts and what I was planning, and I said, this is what I need. So I went home the following day. I decided to forget about my counselor, and I went to her supervisor, and I talked to her that this is what I want to do. I didn't tell her that, I tell her, this is what I want to do. I am capable and I'll be successful. So she said, well, if that's my choice, then I should go ahead and do it. By then, I didn't even have uh, my um, preceptor because the preceptor that I had, I told him that the classes have been canceled, so we may have to wait until the next semester. And my work, what I know is that my director, anybody, those who are ahead of me, when it gets to their clinicals, they either have to quit because she will not give you all the hours. So now... I have the school to deal with. I have the preceptor to get. 
and I have my director to deal with, and then my work hours. How do I pay my bills and take these clinic hours Monday to Friday? So I just trusted God. So I went ahead. And then I filled all the forms. They accepted everything. And then I went and talked to my boss that, hey, this is what I want to do. Thank God I have, um, like, hours, like PTO hours that um, I could use. And initially, she agreed. And so we agreed on everything and went ahead. And I know later she regretted it. She wasn't happy about it, but it was too late. So to the glory of God, I was able to get my preceptor. I was able to get everything done. And so I was able to finish all the clinical hours and get the school done. Now, I was traveling. Um, the, during that period, I traveled briefly. If you, you are all aware that I was a little um, away for a few months. So I told my wife that I want to make sure I, I write and pass my exam before I come back. I'm not coming back still with books or all those kind of things. So when I went after work, I'll come back, prepare for my exam. Two weeks before I return home, I know my time is coming. I say, yes, this is the time I have to go. So I trusted God. I went and took my board exam. And to the glory of God, I passed. So I just want to encourage somebody that our God is an honest God. He promises and he never fails. The last thing I wanted to say, you know what? You know, sometimes when you want to start something, you might be looking at a very big goal. But you may have to start small. I remember when I came to this country, I have my uh, master's degree before I came. And when I came, looking at everything around, I have to go back and start all over. And I was like, God, I prayed to you and before I came, what is going on? I have to go back and do, like, start like a CNA. And, but my uncles were telling me, how could you have a master's degree and go and do that? But I trusted God. And I told myself, God... If I, live, if I stay in this country with anything less than a master's degree, then academically, I have lost. Because I came with it, and I should not stay with anything less. And to the glory of God, God has given me that. So I just want to thank him and glorify his name. Oh, hallelujah. The God that answered by fire. Hallelujah. What a testimony. And as he has done it, he shall surely do it for you. Hallelujah. Amen. Are you ready for the word of God? Are you ready? Hallelujah. I want you to be on your feet at this time. And just for 30 seconds, I want you to just release a word. The Bible says that all scriptures is God's breath and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. Hallelujah. So the word of God comes to do what? To rebuke. It comes to correct and it comes to teach you. Hallelujah. This morning, I just want you to release a word that may the word that is about to come forth, my God, that let it do every correction in my life this morning, that let it change situation. Somebody lift your voice and begin to pray that release a word to God that my Lord and my God, the word will bring power. Oh God, it will bring change, my Lord and my God. It will bring elevation, my Lord and my God. And my Lord, your word this morning, my Lord and my God, it will transform your people this morning, my God. Hey, our level will never be the same because, oh God, of your word this morning. Oh, somebody lift your voice. Oh, and pray. My Lord and my God, your word this morning, my God, let it bring transformation, oh God. Let it bring transformation this morning. Let let it bring transformation, my Lord and my God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome the man of the hour, our very own Dr. Pastor David Abbe. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You may please be seated. You may please be seated. Amen. Oh, somebody, I said amen. amen. I see I have a new organist here today, at least new to me. It is good. It is good. Good to see everybody. And you're looking so nice today. What happened? 
Some of the smiles are different. Amen. No, I didn't hear the amen. I said amen. amen. Dr. Quincy and the wife should be dragged before the Supreme Court for looking so handsome and beautiful. There must be a special charge for that. I mean, in America, we tax people for everything, so we should start taxing. <laughs> Pastor, could you God bless you? Good to see everybody. Hi. That's my friend. I'm looking at her. She's looking at me. <laughs> Amen. Staliaka, now your smile has changed. I don't know. Ah, her smile is new level. New level smiles. <laughs> Oh, somebody say amen. Look at somebody on your left, somebody on the right, and tell the person, you're looking good. You're looking good. <laughs> amen. I thank God for this wonderful opportunity to join you here once again. It's uh, one of my most favorite places to be, Holy Grounds Assembly International. It is wonderful being here with you and worshiping with you. It's always a pleasure, always a blessing, a great place to be. I salute uh, my brother, my twin cars, my best friend. Uh, I know he's in Ghana doing great things for God and uh, just wave at him in the spirit and say, Pastor, we love you. I'll just say it louder. Pastor, we love you. And whilst you are loving him, remember to love his wife too. You congregation people, you are good at loving the pastor, but not his wife. <laughs> uh, congregation people can make the woman of God jealous. You don't know who. <laughs> they walk right by the woman of God and go to the pastor and see hey, you are disturbing us. Let's focus. I'm telling you, when you're a pastor's wife, you have to have all the patience in the world. Amen. Today, I, I, I will try to be nice. <laughs> Amen. I salute you, man of God. Um, thank you for the great hospitality. My brother wasn't there, but I promise you, I will tell him you made us feel so good. Amen. God richly, richly bless you. And I thank God for my wife. Uh, of we've, we've not known each other for too long, just uh, I think 23 years, just 23 years, amen, just, just 23 years, I pray God to add 50 to it, and then uh, we'll be fine, shall we pray, Father we thank you, we bless you, Holy Spirit, we pray that Father you speak to us today, you will speak to us today, Father, speak to us today. Reveal yourself to us today. I, I, you see, I believe that the message that is coming is personal to every individual and to us as a church. Pray for me. That I'll be able to deliver it as simply as possible and deliver it the way God wants me to deliver it. So just pray for me and pray for yourself that God will speak to you as an individual. Sometimes when I woke up this, sometime this morning, keep on praying, I told my wife, <laughs> I said, I don't have a message. I thought I'd planned. I prepared a message and everything, but I don't feel the anointing on the message that I have. I don't have the release in my spirit. And then she said something very insightful. She said, just go and have a chat with them. <laughs> and she said it so simply, I don't think she even thought about it. But it was deep. Pray for me. Just pray for a minute. Father, we thank you. We bless you. Father, I know you will do great things today. No, Father, you bless us. I know you sow a seed in this house today. A seed that shall be watered and it shall grow. It shall turn into a mighty tree. And many birds shall find comfort and protection under its shade. And your people shall be blessed and your name shall be glorified. Thank you, Father God for what you have done and for what you are yet to do. In Jesus' name, somebody says amen. amen. Now, I will go straight into my message. In the life of Israel as a nation, as God's people, from the time 
God called Abraham through to the Old Testament times and uh, to the, towards the end of the Old Testament and then God opened up the new. God had dealt with Israel in different epochs depending on what his plans are for them at every given point in time. And when I talk about time, I'm talking about long stretches, you know, epochs. I mean, uh, uh, might be 10 years, 100 years, 500 years, whatever God, but at every point, God has a special way of dealing with his people. Now, Israel basically went into two types of captivity. Somebody say two. Israel went into two types of captivity. Now, um, they were different in every shape and form. And it's interesting when you look at our lives as Christians and at various parts, part times and periods of our lives, you will see those, we either coming out of one or going into the other or, or probably both will be playing in our lives at the same time. And I pray God that he will help us bring this out. And especially in our life as a church. Israel went into two main captivities. One of the captivities what wasn't their fault. It wasn't their doing. They didn't have anything to do with it. They were born into it. And that was the captivity that took place in Egypt. It didn't really start as captivity. It, it, it wasn't meant to be that way. Now God knew what was ahead. God knew all the time what was going to happen. And yes, so it did happen. So that had nothing to do with them. There was a situation and their fathers went into Egypt and to begin with, it was great. It was nice. And they had positions and all that, but then they grew. They became strong and the Egyptians were now afraid that if we don't do something about those people, they'll take over our land. They will take over everything that we have. So, long story short, they ended up in captivity. They ended up as slaves in Egypt. Now remember, that wasn't their doing. They didn't, it wasn't because they sinned. It wasn't because God didn't love them. It, it, it wasn't because of anything. They were just born into it. And for about 500 years, they were in that kind of captivity. And that is a long period of time, trust me. And, and, and so their parents and grandparents and great-grandparents, they knew nothing but captivity. They were born into it. So it becomes even the norm. You grow up and this is what you're supposed to do. That's how you're supposed to live your life. And, and that is it. You are a slave and that's all that you are and that's all that you are going to be. So that is one kind of captivity that Israel went into. And then there is another kind of captivity. There is a second kind of captivity and that was when God had delivered them from the first and had taken them into a land flowing with milk and honey. Remember, with great signs and miracles and all kinds of things happened. God by a mighty hand delivered them and the Red Sea parted and they went through it and their enemies went through the same situation and they were swallowed in the sea. Sometimes God will open avenues for you and your enemies are standing behind and they think if you did it, they can do it. They try doing what you did and then they fall down. They don't understand. What they have to know is that there is a greater power that was working in your favor. And I heard somebody say amen. And now listen to me. And, and, and after all those things and they had rejoiced and I love it when I read about Miriam when he took the tambourine and led the ladies and they were running and jumping and saying I will sing unto the Lord for he has triumphed gloriously the horse and rider thrown into the sea. The Lord is God and I worship him. My father's God and I adore him. They had seen the goodness of the Lord. They had seen the glory of the Lord. They had seen the mighty hand of God and it's my prayer that by the end of this message, God's hand will touch somebody and his grace will move and somebody will come out of one kind of captivity or the other. But hear me, after all those things and after the glorious deliverance and salvation, Israel went into another kind of captivity. The first one had nothing to do with them. The second one, they slipped out of God's hands. They took themselves out of the place of grace 
they did it themselves. They started sinning. They didn't value the blessings of God again. Let me tell you something. Sometimes we all get there, Pastor. You get to the place where you are enjoying the mercies of God so much that you forget the God who is blessing you. We all get there. We get there. We get to the place where we, we, we take for granted all that God is doing in our lives. And na, 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 like somebody was saying, please come to the prayer meeting. Come to the Bible study. Sometime back, nobody had to tell you, you will be there. If the doors are opened, you are there. But they get to a place, and God was blessing you, and God was doing things for you, and then you get to a place, and you feel like I can do it by myself. Now, when you go to churches, it's no longer to worship and adore God. It is to criticize and look at everything in a negative light, and nothing appeals to you anymore. You come to church angry, and you live angrier. I mean, much more angry than you came in. Nothing appeals to you. The drum is too loud. The organ is out of tune. The Everything, all that we see is for we all get there. Have you forgotten when you used to come into the house of God and it was joy and it was excitement and you came to the house and you want to hug everybody and you came to the house and every day you have a testimony. Have you forgotten about that day? What happened? Because you got to the place of complacency and then you felt like I'm no longer giving and still I'm being blessed. And you got to the place where I don't pray as much as I used to pray, but one way or the other, I'm okay. So you see, Israel went into the second captivity by themselves. And now when the hand of God lifted of them, please hear this. That's where sometimes we make mistakes. You see, spiritually, the cloud moves away before you see the physical impact. You see, Ezekiel saw the, the glory living, but Israel was still intact. Israel was still the same. That's where the deception comes in. You see, that's where you can start thinking, I can do everything wrong. And if you do, I'm doing everything wrong. And nothing wrong is happening to me. Uh -uh. The grace of God, the mercies of God is giving you enough rope and room to change, to repent. Because if you don't, one of those days you're going to wake up and it's like, what happened? And then you're going to try to do what you used to do before and not see the results that you used to see. That's what happened to Israel. Now, after they've done so much evil and the hand of God had lifted off and they couldn't hear the prophets and they wouldn't listen to them and then everything was departed. All that Nebuchadnezzar had to do was to come and drive them out of the land of Israel. My message is going to begin now. So two types of captivities. The one they were born into, the other one they walked into. And you see, please hear me. God's deliverance came because God is love and God is mercy. He will do it for you, I promise you. Makes no difference how you got in yourself into it. He will, he will come through for you. Please hear me. But then he comes through in different ways. You see, <laughs> sometimes when Israel was born into captivity, the way God delivered them, the method God used, was different from other than when they went into it themselves. You see, sometimes we expect God to deliver us one way, and God is saying, uh-uh, that's not how I'm going to do it. You see, I didn't, you walk yourself into that situation. So I'm going to hold your hands, and I'm going to bring you out, but I need your cooperation. Oh, did I hear a man in the house? You see, I, I, I saw the one, you, when, 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 Israel was in captivity that they didn't create in Egypt. God called Moses, not because Israel prayed or because of anything. Actually, they were groaning and murmuring and complaining. And yet, so God raised Moses and Moses wasn't willing. Even when he wasn't willing, wasn't ready to do it, God made sure he held him by the collar and drew him into Egypt. Mighty signs and miracles. He was trying to run away. God said, no, 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 no. I need you for a job. 
The people didn't even know. When Moses went to the people and he said, God wants me to come and deliver you, they said, Moses, no, no, don't bring us any. We are satisfied with where we are. Don't create any more problems for us. Let us stay here. But God said, no, I am ready for you. So even though the people weren't ready, God was ready. And hear me, when God started working the miracles, it was incredible. They literally had to do nothing. Nothing. The blessings were coming. They wake up and all that they knew. Did you hear what is going on there? Man, Moses, oh, man. He floored all the other, what do you call it? Um, priest, the magicians. Did, did you hear it? His one uh, what, what can stick swallowed all this. Israel was in praying. They didn't have to give. They didn't have to do nothing. Then another miracle. Then another miracle. And with each miracle, their confidence was growing. And the Moses said, and the Pharaoh said, okay, you want to go, go. But leave your children behind. And then around that time, the confidence had come. Moses said, you lie bad. We are going with our children. He said, okay, you can go with them. But you leave your sheep and everything behind. So uh -uh, we are going with everything. If it belongs to us, we are going with it. In fact, by the end, they weren't even only going with what was theirs. They were taking what belonged to the Egyptians as well. The confidence was complete. The Egyptians now had to beg them to leave. But that was the first kind of deliverance. <laughs> that was the first kind of deliverance. Did I hear amen? When it came to the second kind, they had to work it out. And that's a painful one. They walked themselves into it. And God didn't care. Because God's plan, listen, God's plan will be worked out whether you cooperate with him or not. You see, if you don't cooperate with him, it is your loss. He will do what he says he will do. No, I didn't hear amen. amen. His purposes will be accomplished with or without you. In or inside this church or in another, he will do it. So I would rather say, Lord, if you're going to do it, I'm available. Oh, I didn't hear amen. I'm available. Because he would do it. He would do it. He will. Do. You think God wouldn't do what he wants to do because of you? <laughs> or me? Oh my goodness. What are you talking about? He would do it. So, this takes us to the book of Nehemiah. And there's so much. I, 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 will, just, let me, I will just keep using summaries. Okay, now. Let, let, let me read a few scriptures. And we'll hold the conversation. So please, let's go to Nehemiah. Nehemiah chapter number two. Where's the man? Okay, so now in Nehemiah, please remember that um, Israel at this time were in captivity. Please look at me for a minute. Just look at me for a minute and I, I will go there. Israel was in captivity. And this man called Nehemiah, read the whole book, it's a, a wonderful book. And by the way, Nehemiah is in the Bible, trust me. <laughs> it's like Obadiah. Obadiah is also there, some of you. <laughs> anyway, so, uh, so Nehemiah was there and um, Israel was in captivity. They had... The, uh, Nebuchadnezzar had gone and ransacked everybody and Nehemiah had a high position in the palace, in the king's palace. So one day some people had what, gone to Israel and the situation was so bad that they were, listen, the, it was so bad, they went into their own country and their country was so bad they had to flee back into captivity. I mean, you know things are really bad when that happens, Right? So they went back, in. it's like a prisoner who has been released, went outside, steady conditions outside and went back and said, you know what, I prefer it here. I'd rather stay here than go out there and be free. So, Nehemiah asked the people, what is going on back in Israel? And when they gave him the report, his heart sank. He said, do you remember the beautiful temple? It is no more. 
He said the walls, the walls we used to be proud of, they've been broken down. Burnt. Everything is scattered. He said the people there are discouraged. Nothing is going on. And Nehemiah cried. And now let me go on to Nehemiah chapter 2. I want, I'll read just a few scriptures and then we'll see what God has for us. Nehemiah chapter 2. After Nehemiah had did the report, 19, verse 19 and 20. Verse, uh, let me start from verse 18. Now, Nehemiah, but when Sambalat, 19. But when Sambalat the Horonite and Tobiah the servant, the Ammonite and Geshem the Arabian heard it, they laughed us to scorn and despised us and said, what is this thing that ye do? Will you rebel against the king? Then answered I, that is, then answered Nehemiah and said unto them, the God of heaven, he will prosper us. Therefore we his servants will arise and build, but he have no portion or right, no memorial in Jerusalem. And then let's go immediately because I want to do something here and save a lot of time. Somebody say, I'll be blessed today. Now let's go to Nehemiah chapter number six immediately. And then look at the verse number 15. So the wall was finished in the 25th day of the month, of the month Elul, in 52 days. And it came to pass that when all our enemies heard thereof, and all the heathen that were about us saw these things, they were much cast down in their own eyes, for they perceived that this way was wrought by our God. Here is a nation a few months ago, just a few months before, everything was in ruins. The walls were down. The people weren't worshipping. They'd forgotten about their God or even if they remembered their God, there was no place they could assemble to worship him. They only heard the stories of their God. They said, we knew what he did in days of old. Why are we not seeing it being done today? We heard of his great works. We heard of his great power. But when we look around us today, there is nothing to show for it. We knew about David. We knew about Solomon. They did great things. And sometimes some of us will look into our lives and there are moments we wish we could go back in time. To the things God used to do for us when we first became Christians. We hear about what God did in the lives of people. Some of us, when we first became Christians, there were testimonies galore. I remember when I first came to the Lord, and it was in Ghana back in the day. Oh my goodness, the testimonies were endless. Every other day was a new testimony. I mean, small testimonies, great testimonies. Testimonies of God's provision. Testimonies of God's grace and abundance. Church, it was all over us, all over the place. And then you come to a point in your life and it looks like nothing is happening again. Israel was in that situation. And so what we are asking is, how come that within, those short, within that short period of time, Everything so much changed in their life. And that takes me to one more scripture reading. Then I'll get into my, the middle of my message. And then we'll see what God will do. Because everything hangs on this. The same Nehemiah chapter number 4. Nehemiah chapter number 4. Verse number 6. Look at what it says. So built with the wall. And all the world was joined together unto the half thereof. For the people had a mind to work. Father, God, just bless us and reveal yourself to us. Did I hear amen? What was it that took the people from the place of dissatisfaction, of pain? What was it that transformed them from where they were because just a few weeks ago, 52 days it took to rebuild the wall. 
52 days. So just a few days prior, it looked, everything looked gloomy. Everything looked like nothing was going to happen. So what changed? Hear me. Somebody arose with a vision. Somebody got up and said, no, this is not normal. Something must change. Somebody rose up and said, there is a God that we worship. His power today is the same as it was in the beginning. The God who delivered us from Egypt, he is the same God today. He will be the same God tomorrow. His power has not changed. His power wasn't better yesterday than it is today. And it will not be greater tomorrow. He is God all by himself. There is no place for argument. He is God. Somebody got up. Sometimes look at your problems in a different light. Somebody rose up. Somebody said, God, I must see a difference. I'm not going to live that kind of life again. I know this is where I am. Insane. Broke. Living, sometimes I look at myself and I'm like, is this where God wants me to be? Is this all that I can be for God, for my family? For my wife, for my husband, for my children. Is this all that I can be? And when I'm not satisfied, remember, there can always be a change. And that change comes when I make up my mind. Amen. Bible says the people had a mind. A mind, a mind. A, not just a fantasy. We can all live in fantasy. We can all live in ways that are full of great expectations, sorry, but no achievement because we are not putting any work into it. The people had the mind to work. The people said to themselves, we are not staying here. We are not dying here. We are going to ensure that a change comes. We are going to give ourselves to change. And they came together. Hear me. When a people have a mind to do a thing, nothing can stop them. You didn't hear me. Anything that becomes successful in life becomes successful because a people had a mind to make it successful. Can I tell you a secret? Every marriage you know of, I don't care which marriage it is, including mine, could have Ended in divorce long ago. I don't, yours could, yours could. Doctor, everybody here. Whatever reason anyone has given before for failure in their marriage, somebody is going through the same thing and the marriage is still there and continuing. So why did he break somebody's home? Somebody went through it and stayed. Why? A mind to stay. You don't stay in a marriage simply because you love each other. You stay in a marriage because you decide I will stay. Oh, the love holds it. Love is a great place to begin. But how many people still love each other and leave each other? They love, but they leave. Doing good is a decision. Success is a decision. Success in the home. To raise successful children never happens by accident. You didn't hear me. It is work. You love your children, but you work hard. You work with them. You work for them and sometimes against them. You can't be a parent and be in a popularity contest. And think I want my children to love me. You've lost them already. And you don't know when to tell them it is enough. Go to bed. You can't eat at this time. You can't eat this. You can't eat that. This is what you do. Or sometimes they're going to, especially as they get ready for teenage years, <clears throat> I'm looking at somebody here who is getting ready. But Nisha Mohabe didn't grow up in Kolegono for nothing. You didn't hear me. It's a decision. You stand by what you believe. The people became successful because they had a mind to work. They had a mind. 
they had made up their mind that no matter what happens, this work is worth doing. Church, it wasn't just prayer. I like what Nehemiah said in the beginning. He said, the God of heaven, please hear me, he will prosper us. Therefore, we shall rise and build. So there was a statement of faith. But after the statement of faith, there was work put into it. A lot of work. Oh yes, I'm going to have it wonderful. And we'll build a big church. And we'll build a big whatever. No, it doesn't happen out of the blue. It happens because somebody said it is worth it. I'm putting my shoulder to the wheel. And no matter what happens, I'm getting over to the other side. Success in every area of life. One of the things that I've told myself, it is not about my wife, it is not about my children, it is about my decision. It makes no difference what happens in my marriage, I will stay in it. Hallelujah. No, you didn't hear me. It is a decision, independent of my wife, independent of my children. I have made that decision. You think it is going to be easy to keep you are kidding me. Because the first thing that the devil will do, anytime you make a decision, is he will knock on your door. Immediately, Israel, or Nehemiah decided that we are going to rebuild. There came Tobias. There came Sambalat. Bad names, but they came anyway. They came. Man of God, they came. Let a church decide that we are going to be different. We have the doors, the enemy will knock on your door. Have you ever decided to fast? And that... <laughs> you... <laughs> thank you. Thank you for preaching the rest for me. <laughs> You decide to fast that day, the night before. You couldn't stop eating. And that day when you drive by, <laughs> I'm telling you, even if you close by your eyes and somebody is driving, you can tell, oh, we just drove back past a McDonald's. Mm -mm, this beggar king, no, 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 no. That is, <laughs> every, all the, everything. Will... How do you? <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 you go to it. Somebody said, that day you got to work and somebody brought you free donuts. And they are the type that you like. <laughs> and then you try to see whether God is looking. Church, whenever you decide to do anything good in any area, expect the enemy, expect the opposite to happen. The day you tell yourself, from now on, I'm going to make sure I don't fight my wife again. Get ready. The whole of the, the, that week. Not what it will come and... Prayer isn't going to stop it. Prayer wouldn't stop it. Some prayers don't bother God. Okay, it will happen. Whether you like it or not, it will happen. Nehemiah had decided on doing a good thing. But then the trouble came. In fact, if you read the book, and to the point that even prophets who were supposed to help him rose up against him, joined forces with the enemy. And yes, sir, there was one thing. And you see, that's why I said, some, you see, sometimes the problem we have is we want God to deliver us like he did when we were in Egypt. You see, we walk ourselves into certain problems and we think, God, I'm going to fast. I'm going to pray. I'm going to bind. I'm going to lose. Some of the things, don't bother yourself to bind and lose. Is decisions that you make. Changes that you make in your own life. Sometimes it is for leadership to stand and say, we change this. It is not comfortable. Leadership is not a contest. I'm telling you. Leadership is not a contest. Leadership is doing the right thing. 
And when everything is fine, the ship sails smoothly. And then when the storm arises, that is when you see leadership. Because leadership brings stability. And sometimes people don't like stability. People don't like organization. People don't like discipline. People don't. So if you are the one bringing it, be ready. If you are the one bringing change, be ready. I'm telling you, it is tough. It is tough. God is taking me to places and I used to travel and preach and sometimes whilst preaching, I know and that's the, that's the painful, that's the difficult part. I know I'm speaking directly into somebody's life. I know. And sometimes I feel like pulling back, but I can't. Because it is like I'm being constrained. And I know if I don't say what I'm saying, I will be in total disobedience. Oh, Jesus, you have to know that feeling. I'm telling you, it's tough. I was in Mafikin in South Africa. It used to be one of those... Uh, 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 well, in South Africa, now they're part of South Africa, Mafikin, preaching in this huge church. And I will never forget, I was preaching, and the Spirit of God was going some ways, and I stood in front of this lady. And sometimes when I'm preaching, you know, I like to uh, bring fun, because, you know, we'd had some very, very successful days of meeting. So the last day was a Sunday, and I was going on and on, and I stood in front of this lady. And I was saying, you see, sometimes... You ladies, I don't understand you. <laughs> because you marry somebody's child. And then when you marry the person's child, you don't want the person to take care of his mother. To marry, hey, hey, you're not going to marry him, oh, don't. <laughs> it's more his idea. That's example. <laughs> so you marry somebody's child. You don't want the ch person to take care of his mother. I know sometimes the mothers are, but they raise the children anyway, so, you know, you balance it up. I said, and meanwhile, you have two boys. And you've forgotten that what you are doing to your husband, your children, they are also boys. They will marry. And their wife, how do you feel about it? Oh, Jesus, it was bad. I was standing in front of the woman, and I was talking. She has two sons. She was fighting with the mother-in-law so bad. The mother, and, I was, and when I finished, I knew in my spirit that I had spoken directly to the woman. Now what do I do? Do I stop and apologize? <laughs> or do I just go on? I didn't hear a man in the house. Sometimes, oh, you see, when you're preaching and you hit some areas, you yourself, you can feel the vibration. I had to go on. Anything that has been successful, somebody has to pay a price. Somebody has to pay a price. You don't allow things just to go here where. He said the people had a mind. If I read it, you'll find out that the work was divided to different people at different times. And the man said, listen to me. Even though we are doing this voluntarily, I don't want anybody to take off his clothes. Except when they're going to be washed. That's how bad they were ready to work. Sometimes we want to see success. Sometimes we want to see the glory of God. I bet you, holy grounds, there's been times you've seen much more power than you see today. I did. I started preaching here yesterday. I've been coming here for almost 13 years. I remember one of the meetings that I came to. This place was so packed. It wasn't funny. You, won't, you think I'm afraid of telling you this is not the holy grounds. I know. Shame unto you all. What happened? What happened? Small, small, necessary fights. The choir used to be twice the number. What happened? Record me. No, what happened? Oh, pastor, is that what you think? No, 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 no. It is the corporate work of the entire body. If somebody will start gossiping, stop gossiping. Somebody will stop criticizing. Somebody will stop blaming. Somebody will stop being a... A, a what? Uh, a spectator. There is enough anointing here. There has been enough prophecies here. There has been enough of everything to lift us beyond the next level. What are we doing? What are we doing? Is this what we want to be? Is this all that we can do? Are you satisfied with where you are? 
Nobody can tell you this. Your uncle can tell you. And I can say it straight into the face of my brother. That's not holy grounds. You should see your pastor in different areas. That guy flies. He flies in spite of everything you think you know about him. My thing is, if God accepts somebody, I don't question the person. What happened? You see, we are never going to... Every church has a period of grace. <laughs> when we start every church, the first few years, things will be happening. Every... And that is the mistake we think we, we do. We always want it to be here. No, there comes a time that we have to go here and work it out and push it and bring it back to the place where the glory of God will be unfolded upon us again and bring it back to the place where you look towards the church, you pray, and God answers you. I used to tell my people, I told them that you cannot die if you are under my leadership because I wasn't ready to bury anybody. And I saw examples and testimonies upon testimonies. I had examples of people who had been arrested, taken to the last place in immigration to be deported. And I told the whole church, they can not deport that person because of the grace upon my life. But church, you see, you can get there as a pastor when the people are with you. When the people had the mind. It was an impossible thing to do. Church, but Israel did it. Holy Spirit, I'm sensing your presence. Israel did it. Why? Because Nehemiah decided. You see, and when that one man, please hear me, when that one man decided to do it, and a few other people joined him, guess what? The whole nation started enjoying the benefit. Church, you don't know what it is like when the choir decides that we will reorganize. It is not about this sister or about that brother. It is not about who sings better or who sings worse. It is about the glory of the Lord. So when we meet, if you have the grace to do it, do it. It is not a show. It is not for people to say. You think, listen to me, church, I've been preaching for a while. I can just change this message and get everybody jumping on your feet and then dancing and then raise a good offer. I know how to do this thing. I know how to do it. Done it all over the nations of the world. In every church and every place you can think of. But it comes a time you have to go and crack the nut. It is difficult, but somebody must do it. And then we come together and we are like, let us rise. I am praying that before your pastor comes back, something would have happened in this church. Don't let him come and see the church this way. I don't care whatever it is. If it means going out and winning souls, if it means talking to each other, changing something, painting the place, do something that will challenge him when he comes back. Do something. And he, he can never tell me what to preach. Never. So I'm not that cheap. But do something. The people had a mind to work. I will always say successful marriages don't just happen. And you see, one of the things I've told myself, woman of God, is if I'm going to be in this forever, I better make it good. No, you didn't hear what I said. Why should I be miserable the rest of my life? Whatever I need to make it good, I will do it. So if I have to dance a little, when I don't feel like dancing, I will dance. As for sorry, I say sorry too many times. You didn't hear me. Today when we sit in this car, I'm in trouble. And even that, I've already said the sorry in advance. Advance sorry. Postdated sorry. Postdated, right? Postdated sorry. Amen. If it brings joy and peace to my home, if it makes my children grow up confident, knowing that these people are going to be there for us, not because we are not human, not because we don't have challenges that any other person has or any other couple have, but because we've made a decision. Church, for this church to go to the next level, we have to make the decision. Let me end my message. Read with me, please, Holy Spirit. Did I bless somebody today? Go with me to the book of Haggai. The book of Haggai. Let me just read something real quick. Now, remember, Haggai is um, happened around the same time as 
Nehemiah. Haggai chapter number two. <laughs> yeah, Haggai is also in the Bible. These days you are fortunate. You just type it in. First you have to open the Bible. And then what we used to do is sometimes they call some strange name, Obadiah. And you don't even know Obadiah is in the Bible. So you flip it, flip it, flip it. And then you end, wherever you end, you stay there as if you are there. Because you don't want, you don't want too many people to be looking at you. So you just pretend. I told you I've been around for some time. I've been around for some time. Haggai chapter number two. Let's read a few scriptures there. And then we'll go on. Look at the verse three. It's interesting. Who is left among you that saw this house in her first glory? Pastor Kojo, I bet you, Pastor uh, uh, Quincy, Dr. Quincy, I bet you. Mama, I bet you. Those of us who have been long enough in this church, we've seen some days of glory. We still see it. The man is not changed. The anointing is not changed. Spoke with him this morning. He goes to places and it's like, I mean, they're carrying him. They, they want him to come back. When I was in a church, I decided on something. It was tough, but I did it. I told myself, I'm never going to preach better in someone's church than I do in my own. But then I know that to do that, I had to be disciplined. I'm telling you. And this guy you see here, sometimes you don't want to get into my discipline books. As a pastor, I'm tough. I mean, tough. Because sometimes you have to do what you have to do. Because whenever you do what you have to do, when you have to do it, then you can do what you want to do when you want to do it. There are the have-tos and there are the want-tos. You first have to attend to the have-to. Because that is what is necessary. And I will do it when I have to do it. It, is, it isn't always very comfortable, but I do it. And it says, who is left among you that saw this house in her first glory? Who is there among you that saw this marriage in her first glory? Who is there among you that saw this business in her first glory? Who is there among you that saw this education in her Who is there among you? Who is there among you that saw the choir in her first glory? That's all the instrumentalist in their first glory. Who is there among you? And how do you see it now? Is it not in your eyes as nothing? Let me run on to verse. But then look, the verse number uh, six. Go to verse six for me. It says, For thus saith the Lord of hosts, yet once it is a little while, and I will shake the heavens. And the earth, <laughs> and the sea, and the dry land. Go to the next verse. And I will shake the nations, and the desire of all nations shall come. And I will fill this house with glory. See of the Lord of hosts. Look at the verse number eight. It says, The silver is mine. And the gold is mine, saith the Lord of hosts. The glory of this latter house shall be greater than that of the former, saith the Lord of hosts. And in this place I will give my shalom, saith Jehovah Sabaoth. You see, the story was the same. When the Israelites, some of them went back, that's before Nehemiah came in. And they went and everything was so rotten and they didn't have anything and they were taking care of themselves and building their own homes. Church, it comes to a time that we feel like the least place we can bother ourselves with is the house of God. We only show up because we have to. We only come because the pastor will say, why didn't we come? Because our friends will ask, we only say, we only, where is that glory? Where is that joy? Where is it? Because you see, God didn't do anything until the people, God, in fact, God told them, you read the, the Haggai, read the chapter one. And God said, when you gathered together, I blew upon it. It wasn't the devil. Sometimes don't bind the devil. It wasn't the devil. God said, when you brought it in, I was the one who blew it away. And he said, why? He said, you want to know why? Because you have left my house destroyed. 
and you are building your own life. You are building your own kingdom. You are building your own marriage. You are building your own business. You have left man undone. And God said, when you brought it in, I blew upon it. I was the one. So don't go and attack the devil. Sometimes you want to see a change in your life. See what you can change in the house of God. Your commitment, your prayer, your desire. What do you need to change in the house of God? What were you doing before that allowed God to pour blessings upon your life? Now we have to beg you. We have to drag it out of you until the pastors become tired. I've been there before. And when a pastor is tired, you come to church and the motivation is not there. The drive is not there. I'm telling you, sometimes, Saturday, the pastor is filled with grace, ready to go and bless. Sunday, he gets into the church and everything drops off. It takes such a long time for him to even come to the place where he can minister. And he ends and he knows there's so much still left in there. And who is not benefiting? The people of God. And the pastor himself too, because the joy of a pastor is to release everything. And the people go home filled and he goes home empty. And then you go before God and say, God, please refill me. Please, God, refill me. I'm nothing by myself. I don't have anything. But, but God, if you will show mercy for the next Sunday, I will thank you again. Church, hear me. God said, when, they, when, God, when the people heard the rebuke of the Lord, they turned around. I'm, I'm challenging the church. I'm challenging Dr. Quincy. I'm challenging you, Pastor Kuju. I'm challenging you, Mama. I'm challenging every member of the church. Let something happen. I don't care whether Pastor is coming in a week or two. Let something happen in this house. Let him come and see a difference. I am putting the challenge across to each and every one. Somebody will take it up and say, let us go. We will do it. We will rebuild afresh. We're bringing spirit back. We're bringing grace back. We're bringing fire back. We're bringing glory. When the choir stands, it is not for anybody's reason, for any other reason apart from the reason that they want to glorify God. I used to tell choirs that when you come, it is not about me. Don't think about me. When you stand in front of the people, think about your own ministry first and the God that you are serving. So when you end and the people are blessed... It is not about me. It is not about me. I used to tell my praise and worship, my choir and everybody, I, told, I used to tell them that I don't care what you do. I had to learn this very early. If you like, when you come play out of tune, sing out of tonation, whatever, when I take the microphone, I will do my part. And by the time I'm done, the people's poor will be blessed. And so, I don't depend on you. So, don't depend on me. It's not about me. Puny little people. I'm angry with the pastor, so I didn't play well. So, I didn't sing well. Do you even know why you are here? I wouldn't give to support the church. That's why the church closed down. And we are no longer operating, right? The church will go on irrespective of what anybody else does. But Bible says, God came in and God said, do you think in the beginning you saw glory? Because you are looking at what is today and you think, oh my goodness, we cannot compare it to yesterday. We wish Apostle Paul were, to, was to be here. We wish whoever could have been here with us. And God said, that is nothing. He said, now that you have responded to my call, from today, see what I will do. And hear me, please, when we read in the Bible, I'm not teaching, so I didn't go deep into it, but hear me. It's God said now, the, he said, now the silver is mine. When did it become his? The people brought it in. The people, and he said, now from this day, even though you just put seed in the ground, look at the difference that will happen. God said, from this day, I will bless you. I will bless you. Something will change in your life. A promotion will come into your life. Some healing will come into your life. Something that you have not asked for will happen. Why? Because you took care of my house. You want to see that healing in your marriage? Take care of his house. 
You want to see that glory in the church? Take care of his house. A lady came in. She was testifying the goodness of the Lord, the message of the Lord with just one word that fell into her spirit. When we come together as the house of God, as the children of God, when we come together determined that we want to see his glory, Church, God will show forth. And when God shows forth, it will surprise you. The promotion you've been looking for will start coming to you. It will run after you. God said, from this day, I will bless you. I will bless you. What was it that you used to do for the Lord that you stopped? Because of whatever reason. Whatever the reason is. Whatever the reason is, what was the good thing that you used to do in the house of God? Or is it that you've never done anything before? Today is your day. When was the last time you invited somebody to church? When was the last time you checked on why somebody isn't coming to church? And when you go to them and they have all the complaints, don't add to what they are doing. Tell them that it's okay. I understand what you're talking about. I can imagine how you feel, but you know what? Keep on coming to the house of the Lord because nobody, and then you soothe the person and you restore the person and that person might be going through much more than what he's complaining or she's complaining about in the church and they come back to the church and within a week, two, three weeks, you see them jumping, dancing, celebrating and it's like, it's the same person I was talking about three weeks ago Aren't you happy that your life, that your investment has saved somebody? There is a marriage near you that is getting collapsed. Somebody is going to hell. Somebody's children need salvation. And you are there with them. How much does it cost to invite somebody? Thank you. Oh. When you get to heaven, mention my name. When you get to... <laughs> Thank you. Amen. Oh, somebody, I said amen. You see, all those things, it brings joy to a part. She saw I was struggling. I didn't know to be this warm. Church, let us go back to the days when we loved doing things for God. Inviting people to church. Coming to church and dancing. Dancing, celebrating in the house. Looking at somebody. I see the person is in a kind of challenge. Going to the person's help before they ask for any help. Because you can sense the need in people's lives. Listen, you want to start operating in the gifts of the spirit? Start helping somebody near you. Somebody is sitting by you and the person needs encouragement. The person needs, so people are tired of condemnation. It is the easiest thing anybody can do. You don't need any education to condemn. You don't. It's the easiest thing anybody can do. But church, when you have encouraged somebody, you take a phone, call mama. Oh, is there anything we can do for you? Encourage her. We know that you are, your husband is gone, but we want you to know we love you. And even if we can't come there in person, we want you to know we are standing with you. We are standing with you. Listen, you know the change that can bring into her life? Because most times all that we hear out of us, hear of as ministers is complain after complain and challenge. And people say, pray for me. And, and when they get the breakthrough, they forget about you. Can I hear amen? amen? The God of heaven, he will prosper us. Today I declare over H-G-A-I that the God of heaven, he will prosper us. Therefore we his servants shall arise and we'll be, there will be anointing in this house to the point it makes no difference. Whether it is Pastor Kojo, Pastor Quincy, it makes no difference who stands here. You will see that glory flow into the congregation. It makes no difference because we are rising up to build. We are rising up to build. We are giving. Nobody is going to beg us. Nobody is going to challenge us. I know that times might be difficult. I know that everybody is going through something. But yes, still, let us remember the house of the Lord. We are doing it for God and not for any other person. Church, when I give in the house of God, I give to the Lord. Let the pastor do whatever he wants to do with it. I have done my part. You also do your part. 
I've done my part. Take care of yours. When I come and I minister like this, I'm free by spirit. I told you I have a message that I could have had people jumping and clapping and running all over the place. And I would have left here empty or sad in my spirit. Because I know I would have disobeyed the Lord. Today there is a call. Shall we stand on our feet? Oh. You want to clap, feel free to clap. Because we are clapping unto the Lord and to our future. Let me tell you what, our name is holy ground. God called us for a reason and for a purpose. Water is good. God called us. Church, God called us. Church, listen, this church, it's not where we're supposed to be. Are we ready to behave like a people who have been delivered from Egypt before? But we are not just interested in the fact that we were taken out of Egypt. Now we are coming out of captivity, out of bondage, out of Babylon. We are coming back into the house of the Lord. And we are saying to the Lord that as we come, you'll be first in our lives. We'll take care of yours first. Church, we will take care of yours first. And then we'll trust you to take care of ours. Please for a minute or two, if you can, just raise your hands, raise your voice. Just dedicate yourself to the Lord. Yourself. Oh yes, Lord, I give myself to you so you can use me. I give myself to you. This is God's house. I'm there is enough grace here. There is enough anointing. There is enough mercy here to make a change, to make a difference. There is enough of everything that is needed. Church, let's take advantage. Please, let's take advantage. Be the person that helps another person move forward. Be the reason why somebody will come to church next week. Be the reason why somebody will have a smile and laughter. Be the reason why somebody will be celebrating. Please go ahead. Talk to the Lord. I want us to do it to begin with as individuals. As individuals. Lamra katara bashabrukata. Holy Spirit. Oh, go ahead, somebody else. Talk to him. Just talk to him. Just talk to him. The katasuri anekara shabrukata. No single individual or individuals must be able to hold back what God is doing here. And it's going to take all of us. So this is what I want us to do. Please hold somebody's hand. First, we are doing it as individuals. Now we're doing it as a church. Corporately, hold somebody's hand. Oh, yes, Lord. Yes, sing it for us. Give myself away. Oh, come on, somebody. Yeah. Let's give us. This church must see a difference. We must pack this place again. With the glory of the Lord. So and with people. Can you oh, let me hear somebody. I give myself away. I give myself away. So you can you oh, sing me. it again. I, I give myself my away. Oh, hallelujah. Mm -hmm. I give myself away. So you can use me. I give myself away. Oh, Jesus. Roba katara babara myself Rima katasuri ane So oh, Jesus can you here I am here I am. as the minister ministers to us in song I want because of time I want you to pray let's pray corporately for the church that we move forward that this church gets into a higher that we've not thought of before listen I don't care what the church there is no church that doesn't sing 
there is no church that doesn't have challenges and problems. It's all over the place. That shouldn't stop us when we come together to make a difference. Somebody, I want to pray for the church. Just hold your brother's hand. Pray for every aspect of the church, every area of the church. And as you do it, may the God of this church remember you. May the God of miracles, the God who has done it for you before, the God who will do it for you again, in your hands. I give Lord, I'm Lord. Oh, yes, pray. Yes, yes, yes. Let the fire fall once again. Let the glory fall your once again. Desire. Let the mercy flow once again. Rabba katara baboro shakata. Rima kata sotoroba. Give myself oh, Jesus. away. Lebros katara baboro shabakata. Oh, Jesus, let your glory fall. Let your power fall. Spirit of the living so God. You ah. can use me. I give myself away. Oh, Jesus. Give myself away. So you Holy Spirit. can use me. Hold it. Pastor, could you please come forward? Dr. Quincy, please come forward. You are the mighty eye miracles standing on your holy name. Lord, we bow Awesome God, awesome God, our great one. Oh, you, you are Lord, mighty I am. Miracles standing on your holy name, Lord. We and worship you. Pastor Kujo, Pastor Dr. Quincy. I don't care, listen to me, how anointed the man of God is. Without your strong, able, determined, focused, pointed support, he's not going to go far. It is like marriage. You know it. I don't care how good you are. If your wife decides not to support you, the worst is if you're a Christian. Your wife says, I'm not standing by you. You better close the gate and go. Tell God I'm coming home. He needs you. Even if he doesn't... You know, listen, sometimes I can do this. Probably very few people can do it like I. Not that they are not... Because I, I know you. I'm close enough. He needs you. He didn't tell me... To, in, I, I didn't even know I'll be doing what I'm doing. He needs you. Pastor Kujo, Dr. Quincy. He needs you to hold hands... There is a gap that only you, the two of you, can feel. He needs you. He needs your strong support, your strong prayers. He needs you. But remember, as you give that support and those prayers, the God of heaven will say to you once again, look out there in the field. You just put the seed in the ground. And yes, sir, I will bless you. He said you will sow today and you know, Bible talks about the time coming when the reapers will overtake the sowers. That can only be done by the Lord God Almighty. Church, I want us to stretch forth our hands upon these two people. Called to stand in support and work with 
the man. It's not an easy place to be in, I tell you. It's not an easy place to be in. It takes discipline. It takes focus. Sometimes you might be disagreeing with everything the leader is saying or doing. But then God called you to that position. So he said, God, until you change him, I'm going to do my part. I'm going to do my part. Until you deal with him, Lord. But for now, I am where you want me to be. Pastor Quincy, Pastor Kojo, please lift up your hands. Church, stretch forth your hands towards them and pray. Because a change is coming. The God of heaven, he will prosper us. The God of heaven, the God of heaven will prosper this work. He will prosper Pastor Quincy. He will prosper Pastor Kojo. He will prosper you. He will lift you up. He will set your feet at the place of testimonies. He will set your feet on ground where people will come in and say, what happened? How did the change occur and you will be going places open your eyes let me do tell you something yeah put down your hands for a minute let me tell you man i've said this a few times pastor quincy doctor could you whichever way it goes and i remember um you see as a pastor i don't visit people i don't have it in me i'm one of i wouldn't visit you period I don't visit, I don't call my church members. I don't have it in me. But God blessed me with people who could do it. Oh, I, I was so blessed. They knew my weaknesses and they protected me in that area. The only time I saw my church members was Sunday after church. So Sunday after church, I would stay till the, and talk to everybody who wants to talk to me, pray for you. When I leave that place, even telephone calls, I don't like picking them up. That is just, I don't have, who said I should have everything? But God blessed me with people who covered me in that area. Man of God, listen to me. Man of God, listen to what I'm saying. Every single one of those people, they used to be five. I think later I grew to about seven. Every single one of them today is a bishop. Every single one. Every single one of them. One of the most interesting, one of them, one day after church service, he came to me and said, Daddy, that's how they used to call me. And I used to like it because Africans, we like titles. <laughs> he said, Daddy, um, you, you, you don't even know where I live. He said, today I beg you, please come and see my house because I've already prepared food for you, my wife. My own leader, and I don't know where he lives and I'm never going to know there because I don't do it. And I make, you see me, I let the church know you're expecting me to come visit you in your home get ready to leave the church because I'm not coming. Anyway, so after he said that, I said, okay, let's go. Man of God, I went to the guy's house. Charlie, the guy opened some banku bro bro and shit There's no way of tempting a garment better than that. Charlie, the kenang, oh, I mean the fish, fried fish, was, oh, oh. Mm, I can still say, smell it. You know what happened? I was eating, and this guy—he was—he was—he was over the moon that I had come to his house. Hear me, man of God. When I was eating, I looked at him, and I told him, "I see you in Italy, pastoring a church. God is my witness." At that time, you see how you people—people you people, like how this guy came to. Uh, I don't do that. Too. Me, I'm pang, 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 pang. I'm difficult to love, I know, but those who love me too can't stop loving me. Man of God, I looked at him, I said, I see you pastoring a church in Italy. He had not held the microphone in our church before, not even once. Not once. I said, I see you pastoring a church in Italy and you are very successful. And I said, I release it upon you. Today, he has two churches in Italy. He's a bishop. As I'm talking to you right now, if it's, if it's increased the number, I don't know. Maybe he has. It's been quite a while that, uh, since I last spoke with him. Church, that simple door that he opened for me, that love, that appreciation, motivated, released something in me. And God of heaven answered, Church, I'm calling upon us in this church today. Everyone, make it a point that I'm going to sow something. I'm not just talking about money. I'm going to sow souls. I'm, I'm going to rededicate and recommit myself to the things of God in this house. I am challenging you. Begin it today. 
Watch your life in three weeks. But over and above all, man of God, man of God, I give you the charge. I give the charge to you. Hold the button. As the servant of God is not here, listen, I want you, the two of you come together. Dog, come, sit down with Pastor Kojo until you come with a strategy inspired by the Holy Spirit that will bring a change and the man of God will come and will be like, what is happening in this church? What is going on? Something is changed. And I have been there before. I know it. I was in London and Dr. Lawrence Tetem was coming to my church. And those days, he would tell you, he used to drive a car. And I didn't like the car that he was driving. One day, he came to preach for me. And I told him, I catch your car. I sense that same grace here today to change somebody's life. I said, I catch your car. You ask him the testimonies that followed. Within a week, he had a serious accident. That car was a total write-off. Insurance gave him a better one. And he will tell you from that day forward, he never went back again. Church, there are some places we can enter into. There are things we can just say. <laughs> Don't tempt me. Don't tempt me. I need to close. Lift up your hands. Worship God. Dr. Quincy, Pastor Kujo, with every due respect, so the man of God comes back. Place a little oil in your hands. I pray for a special place. A special place. A special place. Dr. Quincy, a special place. God is called Dr. Quincy in the, to this church. <laughs> Look, God, it's something funny is happening. This is what God is telling me. He said he's called you into this church as a place. He didn't mean say a person. He said as a place of testimony. You have to ask him what it means. He said I called him into this church as a place. <laughs> you and your wife have to ask God about this. So please don't call me and check with me. Because I don't understand it myself. He said I called him into this church as a place of testimony. Doc, may it be done in your life. Doc, may it be done in your life. May it be known that this is what God has done for you. May people say, look, see what the Lord has done. The Lord has done great things and we are full of joy. Doc, in the name of he who died and rose again. Man of God, there are things God wants to do in this church. I'm going to tell you something. There will come a time you have to even stop looking up to pastor because he will not be here that much. Because you are the ones going to do the job. And I'm telling you, he didn't ask me to say, Karaba Sotoro Baba. I feel rain. I feel rain falling. <laughs> See, Dr. Quincy, your blessings have not begun, okay? What you saw are just glimpses of his grace. You just saw glimpses of his grace. Dr. Queens, if I stand before those people and I speak, let the people be the judge of what I'm saying. Because he says, the door that I'm coming to open to you have not... He said, I will do it in such a way that you can never touch my glory. Ever. Ever. Ever again. You, you would know it will be karma. You will stand back. You will see it. And you will say this... It's got nothing to do with me. This is God. Dr. Quincy, he would do it. He didn't make you a doctor for nothing. It's not just for you to make money or anything. It is for a purpose. And he said, you are a place of testimony. You pray about that. Let him explain it to you. By the power of his Holy Spirit, there is grace, there is glory, there is anointing, there is favor, there is mercy. There is more mercy than you can imagine. There is more mercy flowing than you can imagine. I pray that two of you will hold this place together because you are supposed to be here. You are meant to be here. And going forward, God's grace will take you and he will land you where he wants to land you. Heaven open over us and let the blessings begin. Somebody say amen. amen. God bless you, man of God. God bless you. God bless you, man of God. God bless you. Somebody give the Lord a clap offering for just two great gentlemen. Listen, 
I am ending. I want us to do something. As a, as a sign of new beginnings, as a sign of greater things God will do, I'm not going to raise an offering. We'll take our normal offering, but I want everybody to decide in your spirit there is something God is doing here, and I'm going to sow an extra seed. I'm not going to ask who is going to give this. Check in your own spirit and take a step that you would never have thought of taking before coming to church. It is not about your offering. It is about giving something that will cost you something. It is about you going into the depth of your heart and saying, I am giving this unto the Lord because I feel like it's opened a new door for me. I am giving this to the Lord because I'm sowing it on behalf of my children and my children's children. I'm doing it because of the future I see in this church. I am sowing the seed and saying, God, remember me and bring that change into my life. Yes, we'll take our normal offering, but I want everybody here to take that decision. You don't have it on you right now. I'm not asking you to do it. Whichever way you do it, Write a piece of paper, come and throw it down your whatever you want to do. But please, if you can honor it today, don't make a promise you wouldn't fulfill. But I'm encouraging you by the power of the Holy Spirit. Make that decision. Lift up your hands. Let me pray with you. Lift up that right hand if you will. And assume you're holding whatever you want to use to sow into the house of God today. Whatever it is holding it in your hands. You're writing it on a piece of paper. You just want to come. There is this thing in front of me. Just make the decision and say to yourself, I'm giving it possibly before next Sunday. I'm texting it, whatever way I would do it, into the house of God. And it is my sign that God, there is something new happening and I want to be a part of it. As you lift up that right and Father, I've delivered your message. I struggled with it, Lord, to begin with, but I knew I would obey you. You knew I would obey you, Lord. You knew I would do it. And to the best of my ability, I have. Father, now I'm presenting those people to you as they come with whatever you've laid on their heart, whatever decision they've made, like Nehemiah, they have decided by themselves, I'm sowing the seed for a change in my life. I'm sowing the seed. It's their decision. Father, let your decision also be to bless them and bring a change into their lives. In the name of Jesus Christ, can I get an amen? Can I get an amen? What I want you to do, please, as this thing is right, this is not the offering bowl. Whatever you've decided on to do, if it's a check, write it, come and put it in here. If you have it on you, whatever, whether you're doing it electronically, whichever way, in any case, you want to do it, you don't have the money here, you've not even written it on a piece of paper. This is what I want you to do. Just come around and touch this basket. And then God bless you. My work is done. God bless you. Just do it. Whatever, before the main offering, whatever you've decided, please come and put it in here. And after that, we take the offering. And if you are online, I'm trading my sorrow. I'm trading my shame. I'm laying them down yes, for the joy of the Lord. I'm trading my sickness. Whatever. Go ahead. I'm come trading go. my shame. Yes, I'm laying them down for the joy of the Lord. We sing, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord, amen. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord, amen. Glory, glory, love. We give you glory, love. Glory, glory, Lord, you are the mighty God. Glory, glory, love. We give you glory, love. 
you are the mighty God. Glory, glory, Lord. We give you glory, Lord. Glory, glory, Lord. You are the mighty God. Glory, glory, Lord. We give you glory, Lord. Yes. Glory, glory, Lord. You are the mighty God. Hallelujah. I pray that this anointing, this grace, this revolution, this new beginning will touch all of us. Amen. And the house of God will not be abandoned. The work of God will not be forsaken. We are not here serving a man. We're doing it unto God. Hallelujah. Can you put your hands together for yourself for this new grace? For this new grace. Father, we thank you for this seed. We thank you for our tithe and offering. We thank you that the heavens are open. We thank you, Lord, for giving us this revival this restoration and this grace. We ask, Lord, that help us to do what we ought to do, that your house will be lifted again. Your house, oh God, will come back to glory, that, Lord, your glory will be in tabernacle among your people, even in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's receive Sister Clara. <laughs> 